Good morning readers, it's Tilly here from Tilly Shelf and welcome to another bookish breakfast. So I actually had breakfast several hours ago and I normally film straight after having breakfast um, but today for some reason there's a massive gap so I feel like I'm lying when I say bookish breakfast but it's still the, the same kind of concept of an informal Thursday morning video. That was a ramble that was not required at the start of this video. Okay, so I'm gonna do the New Year's 2020 book tag. So I have not been tagged in this as far as I know so I'm sorry if you've tagged me and I've not somehow noticed. I've watched loads and loads and loads of people doing these um, and I've really enjoyed watching them and this morning I watched Brian's and from Bookish and he said that if he's ever interacted with you directly on booktube then um, he tags you via that mechanism and, and I'm pretty sure that I've you know exchanged quite a few comments and um, like interactions with Brian so I'm gonna count that as a tag for me. Um, because no one tagged me directly and, and you know, it's fair enough because I, I never do the tags that I've tagged in. Um, one of which is the um, the death bag tag. I'm going to do that soon. I just want to do it really, really well. So that is one that I'm kind of taking a little bit longer over um, rather than doing it as like a quick informal video. I think it's important to me that that is um, one that's done in a like reflected on manner. Um, and one of them is the top 10 non-fiction non-fiction, non, non-fiction non books tag that um, came out I think yesterday or the day before, the day before, um, by Lukash at Totally Potentious and he did tag me for that um, and I think I'll probably do that next week because I'd already kind of thought that I wanted to do this one for this week. Again, yeah, conc conciseness is going to be a problem today. I feel like most people have done this tag in kind of like 9 to 15 minutes. I'm guessing we're going to be pushing 20 minutes to half an hour. Um, just I can I've got that feeling um, so so the new year book tag was originally created I believe from what I've heard from other people's videos um, by a channel called bookables and then it was brought up to date for 2010 2020 by a channel called triumphal reads and the first prompt is how many books do you plan to read in 2020 and my plan for 2020 is to keep a count i have never successfully counted the number of books that i've read in a year and every year that i set out to do it um i always lose track at some point like last year i just um kind of disappeared for a whole period in the middle of the year and i didn't like make any videos and i didn't kind of like track my reading in any way whatsoever so this year my my real key goal is to keep track and the way i'm going to do this um this little book is going to come up a few times in this video. This is my um, goals diary. Um, it's just a normal 2020, 2020 diary, um, as in like it's a week view, like a normal one. Um, and I've got this to keep track of my daily goals, um, which I'm going to talk more about a little bit later on. Um, but it's got this like month planner section at the front. Um, I should say this is a paper blanks diary. Um, and I got it from Waterstones and I only got it on like the 2nd of January and they'd already knocked it to like 30% off or something so I was like right I'm gonna have that because it's gorgeous look at it it's really pretty um, the cover design apparently um, is from Urbino in Italy from 1755 and yeah I like it it's pretty it's actually textured as well um, anyway going back to the keeping count of the books see what I mean about the, the, the rambling um, what I'm going to do, and I've done this previously, I did this for Victober in 2018, um, but I'm going to write on the day of the calendar the name of the book that I've finished. So at the end of the year, I'll be able to count up the books that I've read, but I'll also be able to see a kind of like a visual display of which months I read more in, which months I read less in, um, weeks when I've had a really good re reading week, like last week I finished three books. Um, this week I don't think I'm going to finish any. Um, yeah, and just have that kind of like flick through of being able to see and I'm marking by each of them um, If it's a non-fiction, I'm marking NF for non-fiction. If it's a reread, I'm marking R for reread um, So there'll just be like a little little bit of extra detail um, I've read one play and I've put P for play um, So there'll be a little bit of kind of like statistics alongside it as well um, So my, my goal is to, to keep a count. If I was going to set a number that I would like to read um, I talked in some of the videos earlier this month at about my kind of lack of commitment to setting goals and my worries about not being able to achieve a goal, so setting goals like quite low so that I don't fail them. So my my goal would be to read at least 40 books and that is 
not quite a book a week basically was my thinking i think i don't think i will finish a book a week i know there are months sometimes where i read maybe one book um but if i read less than 40 books i would be quite disappointed so 40 is like my kind of hoped for minimum obviously if i review things in two months time and i've already read 20 books don't think that's going to be happening um i might like up that goal internally but it's not a number that i'm saying on goodreads or anything because i don't really use goodreads and um, it's just a kind of like a personal i hope to get to 40 books oh and the other factor sorry i made some notes um the other factor at play is the length of the books um so i know at the moment i'm reading wolf hole that is a massively long book um and i know i've committed to reading a couple of books that are going to be longer or that are going to take longer to read um not because of their length but because of their content like um I think the, the sagas are relatively short, but I think I'm going to want to read them slowly and thoroughly um, to understand them better. So I think that would like set my number down a little bit, potentially. So anyway, that was the first prompt. Five minutes in already, six minutes in. The next one is name five books you didn't get to read in 2019 that you will prioritise in 2020. So, oh, I've only got, oh yeah, one of them's on the Kindle. The first and most important one is The Book of Dust, um, Volume 2, The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman. I have been looking forward to this book coming out since the first Book of Dust came out and I was really disappointed, like it came out a year later than I was expecting basically. I thought he was going to release one a year and then one year was just, you know what I mean, like it didn't come out as soon as I was expecting, I was really disappointed, I was so looking forward to it and then it came out and I couldn't read it at that point so Bo got to read it first and he was like, oh you, you know, you're going to really enjoy it. Um, and then I had just read um, This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay and I, I borrowed it from a friend and I really, really, really wanted Bo to read it. And I was like, you've got to read it, you've got to read it, you've got to read it. And he was like, yeah, but you haven't read the book that I've been recommending to you, which is Vita Nostra. Like, you know, I'm not going to read This Is Gonna Hurt until you read Vita Nostra. So the next book that I picked up, instead of being this book that I was desperate to pick up, was Vita Nostra. And then that took me, I think it actually took me in the end over a month to read. And then by that time we'd passed New Year and it was time to start Wolf Hall and I just didn't manage to get time to squeeze in the Book of Dust and it was going to be the one exception that I made to, I was going to say I'm not going to read any fiction during my course, I was going to make an exception for this book and in the end I've read quite a lot of fiction and not done anywhere near as much revision as I should have done but I haven't read this one. So yeah I'm definitely going to be trying to fit this in somewhere um, but it might be not until after the mirror and the light if i keep going with this cromworth on um I might, I might not get to it for ages which i'm sad about but you know i've waited so long maybe i can wait a little bit more um then another one that's the one that i'm really 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 keen to get to um these rest of them i'm less excited about um so i mentioned i think it was in november that i would be reading the oxford handbook of critical care nursing i'm never planning to read this cover to cover um but i really haven't read as much of it as i thought i would have done in terms of dipping in and out um and this year i'm going to mention it later on but i'm doing more of an in-depth course on um working in critical care and i think i'm going to be using a lot of this to um help me with that course and help me to understand and um like process the elements of that course i thought i would have read this more as like a preparation for starting that course but now i'm going to be reading it kind of alongside that course um so yes that's not so much a book that i'm desperate to read but a book that i feel like i should have read <clears throat> then i've got the stone sky i was supposed to read this right at the start of 2019 um because i just read the obelisk gate which is the the middle book so this is the final book in the broken earth trilogy I didn't really enjoy The Obelisk Gate, but I thought, right, I'm going to have to push on and read The Stone Sky because, you know, you've got to finish the series. Um, and then Bo read it and he did not exactly rave about it. Um, it turned out it wasn't his worst book of 2019, but, it, you know, it wasn't one that he spoke very favourably of. So I kind of pushed it back and I pushed it back and I still want to read it because I still want to get to the end of the series. But I'm just not that keen. Um, so yeah, at some point this year I probably should just polish this one off. Like, it's quite short, it shouldn't take too long unless I get delayed by how much I'm irritated with it. Then, finally, at the start of 2019, I tried to do one of those, like, TBR jar things, um, where I put all of the books I hadn't read on my bookshelves into a pot, um, and I was supposed to draw out one every month and read it, and I did it for January, I drew out the second book in the Earthsea Quartet, so the Tombs of Etwan. 
and I read the first chapter, the prologue in the first chapter, so literally 10 pages, um, and then I, I stopped. And this was the first book that I reviewed when I started my booktube channel, so it's been a while um, since I read The Wizard of Earthsea, which I really enjoyed, like it's a favourite fantasy book for me, it probably would make it into my top five fantasy books. Um, not that I've read an awful lot of fantasy books, but it, it would be up there. And I just, every time I try and get to the next stage in the series, and I, I just hit a little wall. Um, so that's one that I should have read last year that maybe I'll get to in 2020. The next question is, is there a genre that you want to read more of in 2020? And <laughs> I just wrote on my notes, all of them. Um, so basically, the last couple of years, I've had a much better balance in terms of genres in that I have read more non-fiction than I ever have before and I would like to maintain that in 2020. So far of the books I've finished, two of them have been non-fiction books, so I'm hoping that I will um, be able to kind of keep maintaining that. Um, the other thing was in 2019 I said that I was going to read a lot more poetry um, and I haven't. I still haven't finished like a complete poetry anthology, like a complete collection, since I was... Um, maybe about 15 and I remember reading one called something like Learning to Make an Oud in Nazareth. Um, I can't remember who that is by, um, it's on my parents' bookshelf so I don't know whether one of them might be able to chip in with the the, um, the name of the author. And I really enjoyed the, the reading of the whole poetry book but since then I've never finished, like I've dipped in and out but I've never finished a complete book of poetry. Um, so I'd like to do that maybe at least once this year um, and I'd like to in general read a bit more poetry. Then I have committed to reading one play every month with my mum, um, Ros, at Scaddy Dandling about the books. Um, I don't think that that's going to be a massive increase. I definitely read, okay, it will be a bit of an increase. I definitely read at least six plays last year, so I'll, I'll be talking about like doubling the number of plays that I read for this year. Um, but that's not, I mean, plays are relatively, normally relatively easy to read. I say that. The first play that she chose was an ancient Greek play that I found a little bit tough going, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to read more plays. That's the end of that, that thought process there. Um, and what else am I hoping to read more of? I have mentioned that I'm hoping to read um, a non-fiction, um, not a non like a, an academic, sorry, article um, every week. And that's not exactly a genre, but it is something that I'm gonna be trying to read. And I'm kind of like partially achieving that to now. Um, but yeah, they, they, it's an intention that I have to read more um, articles um, as well. Um, then I didn't write down one of the prompts, but I think the next prompt was, prompt was to name some books that have been on your shelf shelves for a long time that you haven't managed to get to. Um, and I've watched quite a few people do this and be, being like, oh, I don't really have any books like that. Um, I definitely, definitely do. I would say probably most of the books that are on my shelves that I haven't read. I think I have read the majority of books that are on my shelves that are mine and not Bo's. Um, but most of the ones that I haven't read, I've had for a long time. Um, particularly behind me is as poetry plays in mythology. That is a particularly bad one for books that I've had for ages and haven't read. Um, particularly with the poetry, like I've mentioned, there's quite a lot of poetry books that I've read two or three poems out of um, and not like the whole thing. Um, oh, I didn't like this one, Sudden Fiction. It's a collection of like um, very, very short, short stories. And I picked it up years ago from a like a giveaway book bucket um, and was like oh this is gonna be really fun I'll just like dive in and out and read little short ones I don't think I've read a single book out of that a uh, story out of that um, but I keep it on the grounds that maybe one day I will um, so yeah so I'm just gonna show you a short selection of ones that I haven't read yet that I should have done um, so I've got the Odyssey um, Oh, I should say, I'm not even starting with non-fiction really, uh, there are so many non-fiction books that I've read half of and that seems to be a real thing that I have, um, that I, particularly that I had up until the last year or so, is that I would dive into a non-fiction book and get about a third of the way through and then kind of grind to a halt and put it down and, and, and kind of leave it there. Um, so I've got a whole range of non-fiction books that I just haven't made any progress with. Um, I'm not counting any of those because th there would be about maybe... 20 at least. Um, anyway, so I've got the Odyssey. Um, thinking of grinding to a halt in the middle of books, I started reading the Iliad. Um, it might have been last year, it might have been the year before. Um, I specifically asked for this for my birthday, I think when I turned 23. 
so that would be two and a bit years ago, um, I asked for the Iliad and the Odyssey and other mythology related books and Bo got me a whole range of, of books about mythology. Um, and I started reading the Iliad and I ground to a halt. And I think actually I would enjoy the Odyssey a lot more from what I've heard. It is um, like, they're both incredible works of ancient literature, but the Odyssey has got maybe a bit more of a, a plot and a kind of driving thought force behind it and a bit more like characters that you can um, latch onto a little bit. Um, and like mythical episodes that are quite exciting um so i think i would probably enjoy this more um and i feel bad because it was a gift and i haven't read it and there were quite a few of those gifts like i did read some of them i read beowulf i read the prose edda um but there were quite a few of those bit gifts that Bo got me that i didn't yet read so yeah i feel bad about it because it was a gift um so it's one that i should have read by now um, then I've got Bluebeard's Egg by Margaret Atwood. This is one that I feel bad about because it's not mine, it's my parents. And this one is representative of all of the books that I have here that are actually my parents' books um, that I borrowed on the grounds that, oh, I'm gonna read that soon, um, and haven't read. Um, and I, every time they come up to visit, I'm like, oh, do you wanna take back any of these books? I'm just just kind of like vaguely generally oh did, did you want to look and see if there's anything that you want to take back um and and they never really do um but i'm worried that one day they'll go to their bookshelves and be like where is my copy of margaret atwood um and it, it's here um i read i think the first short story in this i was quite surprised because i read a recent volume of margaret atwood's short stories called stone mattress um in 2019 and i i loved it and i really really enjoyed it and then i read the first one of these and it just didn't really make me want to read the rest of the collections. So maybe it's, I just like her modern short stories more. I don't know. Um, but I, I love Margaret Atwood as an author. So I'm really surprised at myself that I haven't read any more of these. Yeah. Then the next one is, oh, and I should say I've had that in here with me, like away from my parents' bookshelf for at least a year. Um, then another one that I've had for a long time is The Tragedy of King Lear. I would, be relatively confident with calling this one of my favourite Shakespeare plays. I think between um, King Lear and Twelfth Night, um, they're pretty closely tied at the top for very different reasons. I love them both as plays. Um, but I have never read it from cover to cover. I've dipped into it a lot of times, but I've never read the whole play of King Lear, which is quite bad when I, you know, say that it's one of my favourites. Um, and I, this was my flatmates in my second year at uni. Um, so it was at least, I'm not going to count, but it was at least six years ago. She moved back to Sweden and she left loads of her books behind and she left me this one and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. I get to read King Lear and it's a really nice edition that's got loads of notes because she was studying English literature. Um, I think it's even got some of her notes in it, which I would be interested to see. And yeah, I've just not, <laughs> still not read it. I'm not claiming that I am going to read any of these in 2020, by the way. I'm just showing you them as like examples. Then the Silmarillion, this is Bose, so it's not been on my bookshelves for such a long time, as in it's only been on our bookshelves since we moved in together, um, which is now quite a long time ago, um, maybe four, three and a half or four years? Yeah, something like that. Um, but before that, um, my brother or my family had a copy that I think was on my brother's bookshelves. And I always, always, always meant to read it. Um, I've mentioned how much I love The Lord of the Rings previously on this channel. Um, I love The Hobbit. Um, I love most things I've ever written by Tolkien. And I love like some of the things that I've heard about the Silmarillion. Um, I have read the first chunk um, and then other things kind of like took priority and I have not got back to it. So this is one that I kind of, I always look at it and feel bad that I haven't read it as somebody who says that they love talking. Then this is Lorna Dune. I picked this up in a charity shop a while ago because it's like a, a bound book and I like like old looking bound books. And I think I just read um, another really old book basically, um, or another Victorian book and being like, oh yeah, I love Victorian literature. I'm gonna get loads of it. Um, and then it was Victover and I was like, I'm definitely gonna read Lorna Doon for Victover. And I, then I didn't. And then since then, it, every time I look at it, I'm like, but I said I was gonna read it and I didn't. Um, so yeah, I do feel a little bit bad about not having it yet. And it used to belong to L. Etherington um, in Minehead um, and they got it in August, 1933. And then subsequently it was owned by W.B. Wilson. So it's nice, it's got a little um, 
selection of past owners written in it. It's nice. Then another one is the Milner Floss. I think this is another one that technically doesn't belong to me. Um, my mum got this and she read it a long time ago. I think quite soon after I had first read um, some, like Jane Eyre. <coughs> she read it, she really enjoyed it and then she gave it to me and she was like, you're gonna love this. Um, and I never read it. Um, and it's by George Eliot. I, I've since read, got and read Silas Marner, really enjoyed that, so I, I should read it. And I've heard so many, on so many occasions, people saying that I would love it. I still haven't got to it. And the final one is Thomas Pakenham, The Scramble for Africa. I think this has been on my shelves the longest. I got it after I went with my family to visit some friends who were living in Kenya. Um, and I think we came back from Kenya and somebody said, probably one of my parents, oh, you should read The Scramble for Africa to better understand some of the like historical context of um, not just Kenya, but like a, a huge amount. And it's about like the sort of the colonialism, the colonial expansion into Africa and like the impact of that um, that it had. And I thought, oh, that sounds really, really interesting, but it is absolutely massive. Um, and every year there is at least one occasion when I pick this up and I'm like, right, I'm gonna make this a priority to read. Um, and every year, like, there's a bookmark in the front that I keep kind of, like, picking in and out. Um, and sometimes it's before the prologue, sometimes it's after the prologue. Um, I have definitely read the prologue. Um, and I've never made it through the whole book. Um, but I think I would really enjoy it. And particularly this year, um, the last year while I've been doing this course that's involved a lot of um, looking at, like, the health systems of countries in various... Um, specific regions of Africa um, and I've been thinking like just having that massive overview obviously it's very the reason it, it's massive is because it's like, covering a, a massive area um, but it's still very much an overview approach um, but just having that overview would probably be quite helpful um, yeah not ready yet so yeah so this is a video about things that I haven't read um, then where are we 22 minutes I'm sorry guys um, I guess like you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. I don't know why I'm apologizing. Um, then number one, two, three, four, five is name three non-book related goals. So I already mentioned I've got this little book where I'm keeping my daily goals recorded. I've done this before in 2017 um, and it worked pretty well. Um, but then I just, I think I started petering out on recording them in about September, so I didn't take it up the next year. I meant to do it last year, but I didn't get hold of a book, so I just kind of didn't. Um, but basically, I won't show you, too, I don't want to like tell you all of the goals because there's seven of them, but basically every day I have seven goals that I have to achieve, and then I write down at the end of the day like what I've done, and it's things like doing a little bit of exercise, like consciously deciding to do a little bit of exercise every day, so I can't count it if it's just, oh I had a really busy day at work so I was running up and down, um, that doesn't count, it has to be like I deliberately set out to um, walk to work, or I set out to do a yoga practice, even if it's only like 10 minutes long, I've still like made that conscious decision, and even if it's something really really small, the idea is that if I do it every single day, um, gradually that will make me a little bit healthier. Um, eating my like portions of fruit and veg and um, doing a little bit of language learning every day. Um, there's definitely things that I might talk about more um, on this channel later on, like if I keep up with the language learning, I'm using the Duolingo app principally, I would like to do a review about that because I have definite thoughts about it. Um, one of the goals is to read fiction and non-fiction every week, so that's definitely something that I'll be talking about here. In, particularly, in particular the academic articles, um, I talked about a couple of them on Bookish Breakfast, but because this last month I haven't really been doing like weekly update type Bookish Breakfast, I've been doing like goal reviews and stuff, um, I've not mentioned them, but I have still been reading bits and pieces of academic articles, so that's something that I will talk about. Um, and yeah, stuff like that um, are in my goals. Oh, my battery is low. Um, and then I give myself a mark out of two for whether or not I've achieved it. So I can get zero, one or two for every goal. Um, and that gives me an overall score for the week out of 14. Um, I give myself like a weekly score that is. Um, and then I can say like whether or not I'm doing well on my goals, if that makes sense. It works for me, um, it does work. And so far this month, I'm doing pretty well with those um, general goals. Um, but I kind of thought they were like a little bit too small to count as my big goals, so. 
Um, yeah, more things to talk about, basically. Um, da, 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 da. So the first set of goals are academic. Um, so I keep mentioning I'm doing this course. Um, I have done one exam yesterday. Um, it went quite hilariously badly. Um, we had to prepare a, a microscope slide, um, a thin blood film, and stain it. Um, so we spent like an hour staining the film, um, and then I put it on the microscope. I looked through the microscope, I couldn't see anything at all. I turned to the, the um, supervisor and, and I was like, um, oh, is, are, are the microscopes even switched on? Because they can control it from the end. Um, and I thought that they were all off. And then I looked again and I could see that the lamp was on. And I realised that I, it, like, I didn't have a lens even pointing at the slide. So I was just like, it's fine. <laughs> Turn the lens around. Looked down through, couldn't get focused. I was like, why, why can't I get to focus? And I had like half an hour left and a third of the marks for the exam were riding on this microscope slide. So I was getting more and more like kind of panic, panic mode. Um, it's like, well, it won't focus, it won't focus, it won't focus. Um, and then I kind of looked down and noticed that I actually had the slide upside down. Um, so I was looking from the back of, it's like a little piece of glass. I was looking from the back of the glass and that makes it hard for it to focus because obviously it's like trying to focus on something that's underneath a layer of oil and then underneath a layer of glass as well. So I picked it up, um, obviously more and more tense at this point, um, and wiped the oil off the back of it, pushed too hard and shattered my glass microscope slide. Um, yeah, it wasn't a good moment. Um, but fortunately, most of the like stained blood area was on one shard, so I just like adjusted it and, and just viewed that tiny little slither of broken glass. Um, and I think I, I think I managed to get what I was I like to see what I was supposed to see on this little fragment of broken glass. Um, but yeah, it was just generally possibly the most stressful practical exam I've ever done. Um, so that's one exam that's over. I've got one exam next week. Um, I've got a presentation next week, which is not assessed, but it's still like a thing. Um, then for the next course, that's the end of one course, and then the next course that's kind of like overlapping with it, I will have an essay, an exam, and a presentation, and I think that's the whole of the formal assessment, and then there are two like practice booklets that I have to work through, and I have to do three reflections for each of the practice booklets. So there's a lot of like academic type um, assessment type stuff. I also will have to do my driving, I've tried to like to drive, so I'm going to do my driving theory exam and my driving practical exam, which can imagine will be even more stressful than microscopy. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of like as exams and assessments coming up in 2020 and my goal is to, you know, pass them. Um, and if they go well, by the end of the year, I'll have a, I'll be able to drive, which will be a good thing. Um, I will have this uh, diploma, which I will, I've just finished, and I'll also have a postgraduate certificate. And I'll have like a whole range of extra like useful skills and knowledge for um, my work, which, you know, is the whole point. Um, so that's like, number one goal is to, 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 to do the, the academic stuff and, and do it well. Um, my second personal goal is, <laughs> I've, I've written down in my notes, buy more stuff, which is the opposite of most people's goals at the moment. Most people um, are aiming to buy less stuff, particularly like less um, disposables and less plastic and, and so on. And that is definitely like, that's a goal that I share. Um, so when I say buy more stuff, I mean um, buy more secondhand stuff. I never have been somebody who buys a lot of um, new stuff. I think in the last year, aside from essentials like underwear, which um, I kind of don't really count because to be like a, you know, you, you kind of need to buy those things. Um, I think I bought four new items of clothing, like four brand new. Um, two of them were at a festival, so I kind of see them as souvenirs. Um, and two of them were... Um, like discounted in sales, which I know they're still new and they still had all of those resources like put into making them. But generally I don't buy things that are brand new. Um, but I also didn't buy that many things that were secondhand either. I think I bought only like five or six things. Um, and I have found that I really like wearing things that are, that I've, I've chosen and enjoyed. Like at the moment I'm wearing a stand up briefly. Um, it's a skirt and a top and both of them were hand-me-downs from different aunts and I love I love that I love um, when somebody just hands you like a bag of clothes and it's like oh I think there's some things that you would like in here um, but I particularly like going to a charity shop and finding something that just suits me and that I like um, and I want to do I want to like make the time to do that a little bit more um, 
and I've always kind of felt like, oh, I can't really afford it, but I, I can afford to buy things that I like, um, particularly if they're things that, you know, from a charity shop, it's normally like three or four pounds for a nice top or something. Um, and the other thing that I want to buy is loads and loads of beautiful, brightly coloured scarves that I'm going to mention more a little bit later. The other thing that I want to buy um, in charity shops is, is more books. Um, don't we all? Um, and just books, particularly books that I've read but don't own, or just, yeah, just just books, just books. I just want to buy books, um, which sounds really awful and materialistic, but I don't know. At the moment, I'm, I'm not in a place where I want to be alarmingly minimalist. I want to own things that I like owning, particularly things like the Lorna Dune that I showed you. I, I really like getting books like that, so that's something that it's... <laughs> I don't know, to have it as a goal is a little bit weird. Um, the other thing to go with um, buying clothes that suit me that I like, oh, we're already over half an hour, sorry, um, is I, so I wanted to try hennering my hair, and I have, um, so I put henna in the ends of my hair. Um, literally nobody has noticed. I don't know whether you can actually see it. Um, it is visible, um, believe me it is. Um, the ends of my hair are now like a dark ginger, um, and the, the top is still brown. Like, can you see it a little bit better there? Um, Literally nobody's noticed, and because nobody's noticed, and because I actually really like the colour that it now is at the ends, um, I'm going to dye like all of my hair um, with henna um, and just see what it looks like, just for fun. Um, and that's like part of the whole thing, like buying um, clothes that I like and, and dyeing my hair and stuff. It's it's just about having a little bit of fun with it. Um, and then the final and the most important personal goal for 2020 is that I'm getting married in September. Bo and I are are having a wedding. Um, so. I want that to go well. Um, my goal is to have a successfully happy wedding um, for both of us that, you know, is generally nice. Um, and part of that we are having like a very, very, very informal wedding um, and we're just going to have a group of family and friends to come to our house to kind of celebrate it. So part of getting ready for the wedding is to continue to work on the house and the garden and we've been doing a lot of when we got it, it like hadn't been redecorated since about the 1970s um, so we've been doing a lot of decorating work and so on so like to continue with the uh, bit by bit de redecorating, um, bit by bit um, planting things in the garden and kind of like um, making it more our own um, that's going to be like an important part of also preparing for the wedding and these colourful scarves I was mentioning are going to be for like decorating um, particularly areas that maybe we haven't got to we're going to like hang nice colourful scarves over them. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that's obviously very, very important um, to, to me over the year and just, yeah, the organising and the, the planning of it, but keeping it relaxed, which is the next part is, is there one word you hope will describe 2020 for you? And I've just said that I've got loads of um, academic events coming up um, and I've just said that I've got um, this wedding to plan for that I really don't want it to be a thing that causes stress to me or Bo because I don't think that that is something that it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about um, uh, the video cut art which is really just really annoying. I, it annoys me um, when it does that. Like could it not just give me a warning or something? Um, it just when it gets to a certain length of time and it seems to be different every single time it's just like no no more. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Stop now. <laughs> Maybe it's just trying to tell me like Nobody's interested anymore, just just shut up. Um, yes, so um, the word that I would want, one of the words that I would like 2020 to be is relaxed, um, because I think that these academic goals that I'm working towards are things that I have chosen to do rather than being essential. Um, so I don't want to overstress myself about them and I think I will do better if I don't overstress myself about them. Um, and like I said, I think a wedding should be about um, talking about um, you know, how much you love one another and how you are committed to your relationship. It shouldn't be about um, how much uh, time and effort you expend on, on organising a massive party because that's just not something that that either of us is going to enjoy and I want it to be something that we both enjoy um, obviously um, and then the other word the most important word that I would like 2020 to meet 2020 to be um, is healthy and that's more of a general word um, it's a word for me I, I I don't know if you remember but I had this really horrible horrible cold um, between Christmas and New Year and I felt rotten and I missed a day of work and I can't really miss any more days of work until at least May um, because there's like sickness 
schedule. So, you know, I need to have some firm words with my immune system and stay healthy until at least May. Um, but ideally, I want to stay healthy for the whole of 2020. Um, I would like all of my family and friends to also stay healthy um, in like small things and little things as well and that's part of the, the daily goals in terms of like eating fruit and veg and doing conscious exercise um, is about like continuing to be healthy um, and on a broader sense I would like the people that I meet at work in terms of my patients I would like them to be healthy I know that they won't be but I would like them to be healthy you know when they are leaving our unit I would like them to go home healthy um, and I would like the kind of like the, the planet to be healthy, like in terms of um, things like the, the coronavirus, um, things like um, the outbreaks that we're constantly seeing um, in terms of um, ongoing Ebola and so on. Um, I would I would like I would like it. It would be nice if those things um, happened less. Um, and in terms of like constant um, progress towards um, helping people to live in healthier ways um, and helping people to um, not be constantly damaged by um, const like consistent ongoing diseases like uh, whoopsie, malaria and measles and dengue and whatever. Um, yeah, I'd like the, the planet as a whole to make progress towards that and um, like we're seeing a negative impact of climate change on health. So, you know, on a broader level, I'd like to see things like that addressed. Like speaking as, 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 as one little person, I would like the world to be a healthier place. So happy new year. I hope you have a lovely 2020. Uh, it is very nearly the end of January and I feel like um, you can't really do this tag outside of January because it's a little bit too late in the year.